Welcome to the ZFF Daily Talk. Today we have the Swiss director Patrick Sörgel with us. His recent movie or documentary, uh, The Other Half of the Sky, just celebrated its world premiere at the Zurich Film Festival. Hi, Patrick. Hey, hi. Hello. Nice having you here. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, you're welcome. So you lived in many different countries. You lived in South America, the US, and now you just shot a movie in China. How did you come up with that idea? I think making this movie was like a, a process of many thoughts and many things that happened uh, 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 one step at a time. So I wanted to make a film about the transformation of China. Mm -hmm. It's a very fascinating country for me and I was very fascinated by this, this uh, enormous change that China went through in the last 30 years from the Cultural Revolution until today. Um, it, because it's also very visible, it's a very visible change. Uh, and I was looking for a focus point, you know, mm -hmm. for the story. And I, and I found, uh, after a while, by reading some, some newspapers and getting some information, I read about a uh, Chinese businesswoman mm -hmm. and this, this amazing stories of, of, of uh, these female leaders who had this, uh, uh, you know, uh, big 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 uh, enterprises and 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 doing doing a lot of things and participating in the change participating in this opening up of the country mm -hmm. so i thought to have that their point of view in the film would be interesting to show just a little bit a little side of china but just to to from that percep from their perspective to see this transformation would be interesting so mm -hmm. that's what i did <laughs> okay so i would suggest let's have a look a short look into the movie so the audience knows what it is about right that就是年轻人嘛带着梦想就是存到两万美金的时候我就放弃这个在加拿大的 这个生活我要回国去创业。但是就是这个市场给了我这个无限的机会，就是在这个当中，我能够自己通过自己的不断、无限的努力去证明给这个世界看，说给这个市场看，说我可以做得更好，我可以做得更大。so we saw a little bit um yeah those women they're very busy um, very busy they they have their own drivers and everything so how did you manage to ha to have time with them yeah that was also like an important pi part of the the production <laughs> because uh, of course we had to uh to make uh them participate in the film so the first reaction we had of course in the beginning was like you know who are you <laughs> you know coming from switzerland you know you want to oh make a film about <laughs> us so it's like what are you doing so it, it took a while to have them uh, be interested in the film and also to to participate to gain their trust to have them you know open open up you know because it was important for me that they would really uh, be willing to participate not be forced they would never be do something that they are forced to do, of course. So it's like, in the end, they really wanted to 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 be in the film. So that was interesting because then we didn't have much time with them because, of course, they're busy. So they just they just count the time. So, wow. but we managed to have like three, four days with each one of them. It's not a lot of Only? time. Yeah, but through an arc of one and a half years because we went five times to China, uh -huh. and sometimes we would catch them for one day. And then for six months, we will not see them again. And then again, another two days and another half day just to have as many scenes as we could. But they would, wow. they would, they would not giving us a lot of time, but eventually they gave us time uh, to, to be in the film. But maybe it doesn't, doesn't feel like that when you watch it, right? <laughs> no, <Maybe>. it doesn't. <laughs> I was wondering, it feels so honest somehow how they open up. How did you manage to do that in that short time? I guess. Also but that's because I spent a lot of time with them. Anyway, it's not that ah, I only not spent only four shooting. days. Okay. The shooting was four days, but mm -hmm. the time that I spent with them was much more. Okay. Yeah. What about uh, having their own consultants checking whatever they're saying? How was that? I mean, after the film uh, was yes, done. Yes. Uh, or, or because they're so honest. Yeah. Was there nobody telling them what to do or say? No, no. I mean, because they're leaders, because mm -hmm. they are in charge of their companies and of their lives, mm -hmm. they, 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 uh, they, they can say whatever they think, whatever they want to say. So uh, nobody else besides them had uh, the final say. So, so it was okay for them to be in the film. They're the yeah. bosses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, what about shooting in China? How was the working environment? I mean, it's a completely different country. Any anecdotes? F the shooting, yes. Um, it was very hard because I don't speak Chinese. Mm. Uh, so it took a lot of time just to, uh, you know, be become involved and used to the place. And and uh, but it was it's it's an amazing you know place to film. You know, it's very visual. So uh, uh, it was definitely great to be there, but it, it, it was very hard to 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 uh, get in the culture, get to know people. That's why it took a lot of preparation. So we shoot um, after, you know, first we wanted to see the country. I wanted to see the country, meet them, uh, and then we started shooting later. Okay. Then in the beginning you said you want you were very interested in the transformation of the country exactly. in that short time. You also uh, hear a lot about the history, about the yeah. past decades. So um, what do you think? How will China affect Europe? It's maybe a big question, <laughs> but from How your... Uh, what do you I think, think it's already affecting. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. affecting only Euro Europe. It's affecting everywhere world, because yeah. it's the second, you know, economy in the world. So we are already affected now, but for many years, like everything that we are, most things that we're worrying that, you know, probably even here in this room, many things are, are, are made in China. I think it's the step forward that they also, it's somehow seen in the film is that they would like to go beyond that. They would like to go to create it in China because the made in China thing had kind of a negative connotation in a way. Mm -hmm. And now that they want to be also creators, not only imitate the others uh, with cheap products, but also to make their own innovative products. So this is probably going to be the next step for China in the next years. Uh, but uh, it's really hard to say because it's, you know, it's such a big country with so many things. But for me, it was inspiring to see this woman uh, you know, at, at work and in their, you know, doing their lives. But of course, then you, you, you just take you know what you what you what you see you know like you uh they're very different it's a very mm -hmm. different culture very nice thank you very much well, thank you uh, patrick uh, also for this beautiful beautiful uh, documentary yeah thank you very much for watching we will show some more interviews shot here at the blick video studio on our youtube channel so make sure you subscribe it